Hello friends, welcome to the second unit of my lecture on unit 2 of lifelong learning. This lecture is about evolution of lifelong learning, its intellectual genesis, particularly in the context of European history and then certain manifest issues within lifelong learning so as to determine its present status. It dwells upon intellectual that is conceptual and socio-economic genesis of lifelong learning in our time, particularly in the context of two, three factors. The first factor is that with the ushering in of a high intensity globalized market characterized by knowledge economy and information society, we have the present lifelong learning as a discipline. Second, this unit reflects on the European history of lifelong learning and its evolution in the larger context of European economy. The third aspect of this unit or this lecture is we analyze the ongoing issues in global lifelong learning and summarize it in terms of its current disciplinary status. Our historical narrative is based on two perspectives which may be placed at two opposite ends of a continuum. These two perspectives are first where adult education and lifelong learning are considered as human rights and seen as an educational means for transforming and empowering individuals, communities and societies. The second perspective is where adult education and lifelong learning are seen primarily as a means for skills training for satisfying the needs of the global market economy. Now, the problem is that the market economy perspective of adult education and of lifelong learning is the dominant perspective today. It has been reduced to a one dimensional field of education and training instead of this growing as a multi dimensional and holistic discipline. Now, what is the intellectual or conceptual and socio-economic factors leading to the genesis of lifelong learning. Even in 2017, this year, the term lifelong learning, unlike the European lifelong learning, is struggling to make its defined place in the Indian higher education system. Traditional terms such as adult and continuing education and vocational education are considered commonly as disciplinary fields in the Indian academia. According to one important scholar, Rosna Barras, the present paradigm shift in focus from adult education to lifelong learning is essentially European in its origin, which are manifestly visible in the OECD and the EU policy, that is European Union policy documents, where adult learning is considered as vitally important to the European social model and to the standing of a strong Europe in a globally competitive world. Lifelong learning or lifelong education is hardly 50 years old. If we take into account as the UNESCO's publication of the Edgar Faure report of 1972, which is titled as learning to be the world of education today and tomorrow. This document of UNESCO can be taken as an official announcement of lifelong learning intent. The Faro report highlighted the institutional relevance of lifelong learning to the center stage by coining two new terms. One is lifelong education and the other one is lifelong learning society. The Faro report considered lifelong education as a transformative and emancipatory force, not only socially but also educationally. Some observers have held the Faro report 1972 as a Copernican revolution in education. In Europe, in the context of lifelong education as emphasized in the UNESCO's Faro report 1972 and lifelong learning which was emphasized in UNESCO Deller's report of 1996, we find at least two influential contesting ideological terrains and these are the first one considers lifelong learning education in the perspective of the classical liberalist tradition 
and the second one is the new liberalist tradition. The former classical liberal tradition stood for the individually empowering and socially transformative power of learning along with pursuit of personal well-being, happiness and other goals. The latter emphasized the freedom of the independent atomized individual to learn, earn, grow in a completely unrestricted manner. There was complete freedom in this perspective. In this context of opposing pulls or ideological pulls, poorer and less powerful organizations such as the UNESCO and to some extent the European Council have worked towards the former whereas the rich and powerful transnational agencies such as the World Bank and the OECD and the European Union have worked in the interest of the latter that is the new liberal perspective. One interesting outcome of these two ideological pulls is that the rich western countries including the US, Japan, Australia etc. have in principle recognized lifelong learning as central to the organization of their higher education system. However, in poorer and developing countries of Africa, Latin America and Asia including India lifelong learning both as a policy discourse and as an academic discipline is largely missing except for its token recognition in the field of skills development which again is lingering outside the Indian university system. On the whole the global status of contemporary lifelong learning has come to be identified with the functional interests of the global western market economy. This has led to a one dimensional interpretation of lifelong learning inhibiting its multi dimensional growth and potential as an organizing principle of all forms of education based on inclusive, emancipatory, humanistic and democratic values. Friends, having discussed this theoretical background or the political economy background, we can move to the historical factors leading to the evolution of lifelong learning in Europe. Historically, lifelong learning or simply learning has been in existence since ages. It is as old as this civilization and humanity. In fact, as old as the human beings are there in the, on this planet. Lifelong learning as a social practice was there before any structured systematic education evolved and became institutionalized. As social and economic functions of the society became increasingly complex and huge in terms of organizational need, more specialized and professional functions became the concurrent need of each historical stage of society, which led to slow eclipsing of lifelong learning by superior ascendancy of formally organized and highly structured education system which we find today in practice. Highly structured and standardized forms of learning and education particularly present universal schooling catering to the masses however is only of modern origin which can be dated back to 17th and 18th century industrial revolution in the western countries particularly Europe or UK the United Kingdom. The structured, standardized and specialized education system that emerged to serve the skilled workforce of the industrial society in the Western Europe came to be known as modernist education. The modernist European model of education was characterized as textbook based, decontextualized, abstract knowledge based, which was transmitted by expert authoritative teachers or expert curriculum writers, highly standardized and graded evaluation system and assessment system was in fashion which was based on pure instrumental rationality and positivist science. This form of education primarily catered to the urban middle class aspirations for jobs offered by the industrial society as opposed to the peasant workers, landless workers of the agrarian society. Now, parallel to this in, in India, the British also introduced this modernist education later in, in India during the 18th and 19th century. They did it so by heredity, that means 
in a rushed manner they replaced the old traditional indigenous forms of learning and education which catered to the needs of the rural agrarian and pastoral economy practiced in our country since ages. So, we can see the parallel between India and we had a very good robust indigenous education system although not modern in the sense in the present contemporary European sense, but it was highly useful to the aggregated society we had. Coming back, we have seen that it was UNESCO's for a report of 1970s two which popularized lifelong learning as a new sub discipline of adult education. The call and the need of for lifelong learning can be seen as a culmination of political events during the 1960s when several students unrest and demonstrations in Europe led to new concerns and concepts in education such as such as permanent education given by Council of Europe. Another concept given as learning to be given by UNESCO or recurrent education concept given by OECD. All these various concepts coined by international institutions such as Council of Europe and UNESCO polemically expressed a shift towards a more humanistic right based and holistic view of education. The concept of permanent education was first introduced by the Council of Europe in 1966 which was seen as a fundamentally new and comprehensive concept. An overall education pattern capable of meeting the rapidly increasing and ever more diversified educational needs of every individual young and adult in the new European society which has emerged in the 20th and 21st century. At the European level the first conference of uh, ministers of education held in 1971 forced the alliance of education with the European common market. However, European and American policy interest in lifelong learning faded during the 1980s which precipitated as the UNESCO crisis in 1984 after both the US and the UK that is England withdrew from UNESCO's membership. Until 1993 the European policy environment did not care much for lifelong learning and lifelong education as it was considered as very utopian and idealistic. Until here friends we can see that lifelong education remained focused on routine work centered and employment related vocational and lifelong training programs. But as global competition and structural adjustment policy of the world bank led to economic restructuring towards knowledge based industries gained huge momentum in early 1990s where lifelong learning gained renewed importance to cater to the needs of the new economy, new technology and international competition which saw a close link between qualification and employment. Private corporations started seeing profit in this wake that is return in education or in investment in education as human capital where knowledge technologists started emphasizing better employability and competencies for their workforce. During the 1990s the emphasis on learning shifted from personally fulfilling growth to more individualized and atomized human resource development. Institutions imparting education and training were also expected to focus on employability and move away from reliance on the welfare state. So, subsidy in education and other social sectors were cut supposed to be cut down. Later the UNESCO set up a new academic organization called the Institute for Lifelong Learning. In short it can be called as UIL and it was set up in 2006 to promote and strengthen the process of recognition, validation and accreditation standards for lifelong learning and adult education. Then more recently another document EU document European Union document called European Union 2020 that is 2020 which talks about the European strategy for smart sustainable and inclusive growth has planned an integrated program for 
lifelong learning which is called as Erasmus for all for the period 2014 to 2020. The history of adult education and lifelong learning in Europe varies greatly by region and country. It is not uniform in all or same in this, uh, all countries. It borrows positive elements from enlightenment philosophy of equity and individual fulfillment, yet it moves towards more neoliberal values like complete individual autonomy and freedom and choice. Recognition and importance of adult learning and its present form known as lifelong learning has increased enormously since the mid 1990s, but the tension between the broad and the narrow functionalist views has also increased. In this tension, we find that slowly lifelong learning in Europe is being institutionalized as a concrete discipline as the central guiding principal discipline for the entire higher education. But in India, we find it missing. Since the early 1970s, global changes started pushing adult education towards new paradigms like lifelong learning and global citizenship education or simply called as global education to meet the needs of constantly changing skilled workforce and globally oriented citizens respectively. So, friends, let us see this intellectual genesis of lifelong learning according to different purposes it served the European society. The first is that democratic aspirations among people have led to massification of higher education. There is too much of rush of students for higher education which the nation states cannot meet the financial burden or investment it requires. Under democratic pressure to expand enrollment and access to education, globalization, particularly your structural adjustment policy has put pressure to cut operative costs of education for bringing fiscal stability through financial austerity, policy reforms and adoption of and introduction of new learning systems and strategies, pedagogies, online delivery systems based on web and internet technologies and creation of virtual universities through massive open and online courses MOOCs in short it is called which we are part of it uh, right now where private sectors are encouraged to play a major role. In fact, virtual universities based on web online courses, privatization of schooling and technical institutions with focus on lifelong learning and global citizenship education are considered to be the central and key organizing principles for all forms and all levels of education and learning. As said earlier, the intellectual genesis of lifelong learning has been linked to the needs of knowledge economy and information society. These two specific factors have pushed in for new policy provisions for continuously upgrading training and knowledge transmission in our education system. In this context, Lifelong learning in Europe has received great polemical attention in policy terms, which seeks its institutionalization as a new subdiscipline of adult education called lifelong learning. Thus, lifelong learning has pushed for profound changes in the curriculum, content, pedagogy, including andragogy and heterogogy, and mode of learning based on individual needs, aspirations, and styles. Yet, as an independent discipline, both adult education and lifelong learning remain at a very low position in terms of financial that is budgetary provisions across most European and Afro-Asian countries. As a holistic discipline of study, lifelong learning remains anchored in the market driven demands. It is not driven by social and cultural values of the society for a humanistic upbringing. At the moment, the landscape of adult education and lifelong learning has mixed and incoherent principles, policies and practices. Relocating either adult education within lifelong learning or the vice versa requires a shared, integrated and holistic philosophy of the purposes and benefits of adult learning. Although European countries have a current policy 
in the third world countries or the poorer countries like Asia and Africa, we find it very much at its infancy that is at its child stage. Now, with this kind of origin or development of lifelong learning in terms of its institutionalization, there are issues in lifelong learning and try to analyze its present disciplinary status. Lifelong learning friends is characterized by polyvalent rhetoric promising a utopian learning society where an individual learner in principle could learn everything and anything he or she desires. In fact, as a policy discourse, lifelong learning is currently the best selling educational dream. However, there are many unresolved and conflicting issues in lifelong learning. For example, lifelong learning is supposed to contribute to the creation of learning organizations and learning societies as visualized by the UNESCO's vision of learning to be that is as exemplified in Foro report of 1972. However, in practice all lifelong learning systems and learning organizations serve mainly utilitarian and functional demands of constantly changing market and technologies, albeit on a very limited scale with little priority in terms of financial budgetary allocation, not only in Europe, but the entire world. The financial burden on education also provides European countries to put much emphasis on lifelong learning. To repeat what I have said, in other words, adult education and lifelong learning are recognized and protected only minimally, that is at the least manner, in the least manner. And policy concerns for them in terms of legislation varies from country to country. So far, European Union efforts for lifelong learning have done little to alter its formal standing and the public resources allocated for it. Now, so having discussed or having understood little bit the background of European, for much more deeper knowledge, you must consult other learning materials or reading materials. Aspect of the institutionalization of life learning and its present status. Here I give you two quotes by two eminent people. The first quote is, I read it, the history of adult learning and education is a hit and miss story, starting off with strong rhetoric, promises and expectations and concluding in limited successes and even neglect and disappointment in too many cases. This is from Manjur Ahmed from Bangladesh. There is another quote which I would like to produce before you. The quote is like this, many national governments education and social policies have not prioritized adult learning and education as has been expected and hoped for. Rather, in other sense, they have not allocated the necessary final resources. This is a quote from our UNESCO's UIL study of 2009. Friends, we can see that from these two quotes, there is very sad and utterly neglected state of adult education and lifelong learning in most part of the world barring the few rich western countries including the US, Japan and Australia. Until now, however, there has been no separate adult education and lifelong learning policy within higher education system of most countries. Adult education and lifelong learning constitute a small and the least prioritized fragment of the general education policies of various national governments including India. Adult education policies are incoherent and fragmented more like a patchwork of measures responding to specific issues than a framework of linked principles and programs. This is also directly from a quote from the UNESCO UIL study. Friends, only a few countries in Europe including the US, Japan and Australia have a coherent, less ideological, more pragmatic and independent adult education and lifelong learning policies. In poorer and developing countries, adult education and lifelong learning, they have been only slowly and partially incorporated into their general educational policy framework. More significantly, both adult education and lifelong learning 
have not been matched by necessary political and financial commitment in poorer and developing countries like India. Friends, this is the condition of adult education and lifelong learning in terms of its evolution. In terms of its evolution, it has been largely linked to the evolving market in the Europe and in the world. Particularly in the contemporary 21st century, globalization has led to define the terms and conditions, the curriculum, the mode, modus operandi of lifelong learning. 